Hey folks, thanks so much for joining me live today. If you're a life insurance agent and you're stuck, you're struggling, you're not growing fast enough, you don't know how to get better leads, all that kind of stuff, you don't know the sales process, this is something you wanna make sure that you subscribe to. Wherever you're following me right now, whether it's on Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube, go ahead and give me a shout out and let me know that you're here. We've got a good one for you on today. We're gonna be talking about handling objections and I'm going to cover two objections today. The first one is I need to talk to my spouse about it. That's an objection we all get, right? The other one is I need to think about it. Now, there's a couple of things that are involved with this in regards to this whole thing. Most agents in most places, when you talk about objection handling, what we're talking about is, or what most people have been talking about is, if an objection comes up, this is how you handle it. Well, if you're getting to the point where you're always handling objections and you've got your little sheet out of notes on how to handle certain objections, actually, it's already too late. My little uh, iPhone is going off, forgot to turn that off. But anyway, it's already too late at that point to try and handle an objection because they've been thinking about this the whole way through. The way that you wanna actually handle objections is before they come up. You wanna make sure that you are definitely handling them before they come up. I'm just looking over here, that phone call messed up my screen, but here we go. So what do you have to do to overcome objections before they even come up. I said before, a lot of people have that little sheet that they use, right? They've got a little sheet that um, they use to overcome objections. Um, hey, what's going on, Brandon? Glad to have you in here over on LinkedIn. Thanks for being here, my friend. Um, and if you are, wherever you're watching me right now, you can go ahead and give me a little comment and I'll pop you up on screen as well. But Overcoming objections after they occur is really not the thing to do. You want to make sure that you're handling objections up front. So you've got your little sheet that you have probably made of all the different objections that you hear. And if you don't have a sheet, you want to make sure that you start developing one. What are the things that you normally hear as an objection? And then what we can do is go ahead and make a plan so that you can handle those objections up front instead of handling them at the end, which just becomes more of a tug of war and things of that nature. So let's handle this one right here. I need to talk to my spouse about it uh, before I decide. Now, if someone is saying that to you each and every time, each and every prospect that you get in front of, you know this is a normal objection that comes up. So how do we handle that up front? The first thing is you stop doing one leg appointments. Now, what's a one leg appointment? It is that appointment where both decision makers or all the decision makers are not in the room, not on the phone, because that is an easy out for someone not to make a decision because they can always defer. They can always get you off the phone. They can always get you out of their home because all they're going to do is defer that. Well, the real person isn't here that helps me make this decision, so I can't make it right now. Give me a call back tomorrow. Give me a call back next week or later in the week. And we all know how that goes. Because if you don't make the sale right there on the phone or right there in the home, you only have about an 8 to 15% chance of actually making that sale later. Do you like those odds? Not real good odds, are they? So you don't want to face that every single time. So let's just do a little scenario here. If you're in the home or you're on the phone, you get Johnny on the phone. Hey, Johnny, this is Bill. Um, getting back to you about the final expense life insurance that you wanted to get, blah, 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 blah. You know the spiel that you normally say. With that, what you instead do, once you go through all of that, it's like, well, hey, Billy, what was the thing that, did I say Billy or John? Doesn't matter. Hey, prospect, what was the thing that really made you want to book this appointment today? You want to know that first. Why are we booking this appointment? Let them tell you that story because that story also helps them engage with the process and it'll go deeper. Now, after they tell that story, well, thanks so much for sharing that with me, Mr. Prospect. I really, really appreciate that. So tell me, um, who actually is going to be helping you make this decision? Um, is it a spouse, something like that? Is it another, another child? Because I know you want to make sure that they get covered, but... 
is this something that you want? And are you the decision maker? Now, don't say it in that and don't frame it in that way, but just say, who's going to be helping you make this decision today? You know, when we talk, who's going to be helping you make this decision today? Oh, well, now it'll come up, right? Okay, I have to go and talk to my spouse about it. This is where you say, and this is where you have to be bold. Look, we should probably go ahead and end this right now because we need to have that spouse in here with us because this is an important decision. I want to make sure that I give you and them all of the information that is needed to help you make the right decision for you and your family. There's a lot to discuss. Some of it's kind of technical. And I want to make sure that the coverage that we get, one, your spouse is going to like because they're going to be the beneficiary. So they need to be in on this conversation. So why don't we go ahead and set up that next appointment? This is one of those things where you've got to be very thick skinned. You've got to be strong and know that if I go through this 45 minute to an hour appointment and that decision maker isn't here, it's probably not going to end up good for me. It's probably not going to end up good for them. And the whole reason that you're here is to make sure that they get covered. And you want to eliminate that objection before it comes up at the end. So you've got to have that thick skin to say, you know what, this isn't the best use of your time or their time to go through with this because this is not going to end well. All right. And by the way, if you've got questions or anything like that, you can go ahead and pop them into chat as well. And we can take care of that too. All right. So what's the next thing? The next thing is, Ooh, I love this one. Love this one. I need to think about it before <laughs> I decide. Now, what does that mean? If you're getting to the end of an appointment and someone is saying, I need to think about it, something really has gone awry. You have not given the information appropriately. They don't trust you. They don't trust the process or they don't trust themselves to make a decision. Those are the three things. So you've got to make sure that you handle this. I need to think about it objection up front because that could be you got to the end. They may not have the money. So let's talk about that because a lot of times when they say I need to think about it is because it's a money thing. So you want to make sure at the beginning of this that you're asking the question right after the spouse thing and all of that and whatever objections that you normally get, you want to handle them at the beginning of the call. You want to handle them at the beginning of the call to eliminate them because if you try and eliminate them at the end, it's not going to go over well. So when you're doing this, especially around I need to think about it, a money objection, hey, well, what's kind of the budget you want to stick in within here? Let's, let's do that because I don't want to show you a plan that doesn't fit within your budget or meet the needs that you have. So I know you may have a certain dollar amount as far as, um, you know, a benefit that's going to go to your beneficiary, like 100000 200000 whatever that is. But let's just do run some numbers here because I want to make sure that it's going to fit within your budget. So tell me now, what's the range you want to stay within? Now you've eliminated the I need to think about it money objection. Now, also, I need to think about it could mean, again, there's something going wrong in the conversation. Now, if someone says at the end, I need to think about it, don't ask them, what do you need to think about? That's not the question to ask at all. And you want to make sure that it's covered at the beginning. And what you do is if you're getting that I need to think about it objection at the end, start noting, noticing that, noting it and understanding the reason why. They're giving you that objection of, I need to think about it. Because it could be a couple of different variables. It could be the money thing. Um, it could be you haven't cleared up the spouse thing. So that's another, I need to think about it objection. If they haven't flat out said, I need to talk to my spouse to make a decision today. And also, here's a good one to overcome the, I need to think about it objection. So Mr. Prospect, Miss Prospect, when are you looking to actually put this in place? Like, I'm here today with you, but when are you actually looking to go ahead and make sure that you pull the trigger on this so that you and your family are covered? Now you have a solid, you have some solid information going on. You know whether they're looking for it right now. They'll tell you if they've got other agents coming over. You'll know then how to handle those specific objections. Look, handling objections can be one of those things that is, if you, again, if you're waiting until the end, it's not going to go over well. You need to make sure that you're handling those objections before the end. Take your piece of paper out. Take notes. You can think back to all the different appointments you've had. 
what are the objections you're getting? Write all of them down and then write out how you're going to handle them right up front. Look, leave me some comments below. How do you handle I need to think about it? How do you handle I need to talk to my spouse? What are the other objections you're getting that other people need to know about that they need to handle up front as well as opposed to at the end? Thanks so much for being here with me today. I'll see all of you soon. You take care.